Today, we review our most provocative findings so far, our back to normal barometer. You're not gonna wanna miss this. Hi everyone, John Lass with Sports and Leisure Research Group here with David Klein. And we're back to report findings from the latest wave of our back to normal barometer, our three mode tracking study developed in conjunction with our friends at Engages and Rock Solutions, designed to determine what it will take to get consumers to re-engage with a variety of leisure time and discretionary activities. And let's get right into it, because we've been reporting one finding that has raised more eyebrows than anything else we've been talking about. And recently, we've seen some things that perhaps have caused people to drastically change their tune when assessing that data. David, what is this finding and what's caused all this trouble? Well, John, as part of the barometer, we track the willingness of consumers to gauge in their favorite activities. And over the course of the study, we have seen that those who have recently taken a cruise increasingly willing to take a cruise in the future without hesitation or any additional assurances at all. While so much negative media coverage of cruise lines, this finding has been met with great, a great deal of skepticism and concern. Certainly, no one would wanna take a cruise in this environment, but as it turns out, you always have to trust the data. And what has started to happen is that skeptics have started to change their tune with the reporting of recent developments. It seems that once the cruise lines reopened their reservation systems, bookings started to soar as much as 600%. And while it's always nice to be validated, there's a bigger message here to, to, to uncover, which is that a large and growing percentage of consumers are finding their way into that ready to go segment beyond just cruising in a wide variety of these discretionary activities. And John, we've been talking about this a lot. We really have to understand what's behind this trend. And I think the data is helping us to do that, David, because we've seen some really interesting macro developments. In fact, with what we call our matrix of concerns, we've recently seen that consumers are equally concerned about their personal finances and the state of the US economy as they are with the health crisis. So suffice it to say that if consumers are as motivated by factors other than health, they're gonna be more likely to re-engage. And secondly, I think it's important to know that as more cruise line consumers are moving into this ready to go segment, those requiring a breakthrough such as a vaccine or an ethical protocol to mitigate the effects of COVID-19 have also increased. In fact, what we've defined is a trichotomy. There's really three segments, David, that are out there. Those who are ready to go right now, which represent about half of the people that we've been talking to, as well as a quarter of folks who kind of fit into one of two other categories, those being either the, the folks that need further assurances or those who are very hesitant and looking for breakthrough. So what, what do we learn from these three different segments, David? Well, you know, it would be nice to say that the pattern that we're seeing in the cruise line industry is the same pattern across a bunch of others, but unfortunately it's not that simple. You know, when we look at other segments, for example, live sporting events, what we see is, again, a very similar pattern with respect to the ready to go segment, those who are ready to go now and engage in that activity without any assurances at all. As you can see here, that, that percentage continues to rise. However, this time, when we look at the breakthrough segment, those requiring a vaccine or approved medical protocol to return to live sporting events, that segment has actually declined over time. And that's a much different pattern from what we saw with cruise lines. But when it comes to sports, and we talk to sporting uh, uh, organizations and uh, franchises quite a bit, there's something else driving sports, isn't there, John? There is, and, and we've been tracking three specific elements that go into a measurement of sports equity among fans within the current situation's context. And specifically, we're looking at deprivation, need gap, and anticipation. And when we add those all together, what we calculate is called an opportunity score. And for nearly all the sports that we've tracked, the opportunity score has increased significantly. So it really isn't surprising to see this upward trend in the willingness for people to attend live sporting events as sports slowly begin to come back. Even if it is initially without fans, we may very well see that sports returning to TV might be enough to meet their needs without their physical attendance. And right now the trend is clear that as sports slowly return, 
the willingness for fans to come back and attend sports is going to likely increase in the short term. Now, going forward, you can see we'll be tracking all of these metrics as well as many others as part of our back to normal barometer. Finally, we're delighted to provide these findings and insights to you through custom briefings, videos, whatever it is important to you, we would love to work with you on it. So if you'd like a briefing for your organization or know of others who might be interested in learning more about what we're finding, just let us know. Give us a call, contact us, email us, text us. We're always happy to talk about what we're discovering. And in the meantime, keep an eye out for more announcements, more videos, and more information regarding the Back to Normal Barometer.